You want to bamba? You want a G with the big boys? Now you the wrong get the kitty, you the wrong get the get a coffee drink, what a drop car. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time, a very big welcome to you. My name is Dima Ututu and I have a guest on this channel who is my younger brother, but I will let him introduce himself. Get the guest. Yeah. <laughs> Are you not the guest? <laughs> my, my name is Kingsley. But you can call me. I'm a front end engineer. Okay, yeah. So he recently graduated from school. He's always copying me. I did electrical engineering and then he went ahead to study. What did he study? Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. And now he's into software yeah. as well. Okay, um, so the this video actually he was the one that forced me into it. So when I came back, he's like, Oh, I want to make an appearance on your channel and I have some questions I want to ask you, so better get ready and all of that. So I bring you guys today. I will call it a brother stand, but he wrote down the questions if, on his if phone. You call it brother stand, what is it then? It's uh, <laughs> me. Okay, so he has the question. You want to know us? <laughs> <laughs> so he has the questions on his phone and he's going to be asking me the questions. So whenever he's looking down, just know that he's going through his phone to pick. He has written down the questions, so it's left for me to answer those questions. Alright. So um, um I got that. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been gone for you know you've been gone for two years and all, so like how how have you done being? That's relocating. Relocating and you know, staying away from the family for about two years and all. Okay, so relocation, when it comes to relocating and leaving Nigeria, I would say it's it's not easy, I would not lie, because most times I actually miss you guys. Not all the time, <laughs> but most times I miss you guys because I'm very, very close to my family, right? So, uh, right? Are you looking at me like I'm lying? <laughs> are, you, are you close to everybody? I'm close to everybody. No, tell me who I'm not close to. Just, just ask me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm really close to you know everyone in my family. I think it just boils down to you know being the first daughter and you having to make sure that everyone is okay. So the thing that I'll be really grateful for is the fact that I relocated with my friends. I know that it would have been way difficult if I moved alone, but I moved with my friends that I stayed with in Lagos and have been with since university. So I would say I also miss sometimes sometimes whenever I'm sick, I'm like, oh I wish I was at home. And then sometimes when work is really stressful, I really do miss room. But then again, when I look back, I'm like, okay, I'm doing something worthwhile that will also eventually help everyone back home. It encourages me to keep going. I don't know if that's answer. How long have you been working in Joko? My job in Joko? Yeah, how long? Two years, but I relocated 2020 October. Has there been any pressure or you know, working for them? How has it been? It's different from working in Nigeria and working in Oh, uh, I would not even like. I've worked with over three or four Nigerian companies, right? And yeah. I've worked with one international firm and this international firm, I won't even lie, is the best I have ever worked with. So working with a Nigerian firm has come with its own ups and downs as well as working with you know, international firm. So when you work with international firm, like I'm like the only black girl in my team, wow. right? That so some be, that must be is it intimidating? No, it's not no, it's not it's, no, it's not at all. It's not intimidating. At all, not at all. What about imposter syndrome? No, I I was, oh, yeah, every I think every work comes with imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. So like um I do get imposter syndrome. I, I think I, I I talk about it as well on my channel, on my main channel. But the thing is working with international firm, I wouldn't even like the structure is very different. They are very, very, very <coughs> up like they really, really mean it when they mean work life balance. Like well, compared to the Nigerian firms that I worked in, most times you work even beyond the hours you're supposed to work and most times it's not really, really appreciated. Why there are some that would appreciate it, but I won't lie, um, working with the international company I work with, there's a lot of, yeah, it's, it's easier, the structure is easier, you know, your and then you're, you're also working with very bright and intelligent people and then you meet people from different divers, like different countries, like I've worked with people. God, where? <laughs> I've worked with a lot of people from, you know, maybe even Uganda, I've worked with people from the UK, US, like a lot of international people, even people from Germany and all of that. So, so it's, it's way better than working here? If working here, you are home, but there is still a lot of improvement when it comes to working you know, in exactly. Nigeria. But working abroad, I would say I would pick it anytime, any day over working for a Nigerian family right now. I don't know about the future, but right now I'll keep working for an international firm. 
So yeah. they, are, they are definitely paying you know, big money now. Because I know in this place, what you're doing compared to that place, it's going to be like two times. The salary is going to be like way Definitely. That's another that downside to so, working. So, yeah, that's another side. So how, how did you feel when the first time you saw the check? First time you saw <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so I won't even lie. So working with a Nigerian firm, because of the style of living in Nigeria, they pay you, let's say for example, maybe 300 or 400,000. And in Nigeria is okay, right? In Nigeria is it's very okay to actually live on that particular salary. But when you work with an international firm, your worth is really recognized and you're paid way more. I will not lie, when I got my first salary, it was over 500% more wow. than what I was wow. earning as Bitcoin, that. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, yeah. <laughs> you know, like they don't Bitcoin. pay me Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Just like Bitcoin exactly, you know, so yeah. yeah, so I would say the pay way better. And the first time I saw my salary, I would not even lie, I was aesthetic it was really nice it was, it was nice so how do you go about managing the money and you know saving your money and all of that so i've always been a firm believer of money management i mean i have a, a, a channel dedicated to just <laughs> finance <laughs> so about managing my money what i do i think i'm even going to maybe create a video on how i budget my salary right so what i do is whenever my money comes in i first of all pay myself I take out my savings, which is also what I encourage people to do okay, before, so. yeah, before I start paying any other person, maybe the landlord okay. or things I want to buy. So first of all, I pay myself and then I take out my rent. Paying myself is just savings. I'm not talking about investment. So I pay myself first and then I take out my house rent because I need the roof over my head. Once I pay my house rent and then I go ahead and you know, send the money to family, uh, what I would, my normal everyday expenses allowance and then I go ahead to invest. I always, always, always make sure I invest. So what happens is most times the salary is actually not enough. So what really helps me is the fact that I save and I also invest. And sometimes the investment yields very good <coughs> return for me. So. so how do you get into the you know, investment crypto, crypto game? Because nobody, I don't I didn't, I didn't really have passion for crypto. Okay, so nobody, nobody saw that coming. No, 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 no. Funny enough, my crypto journey actually started since 2016. Yeah, yeah, very young. It started and stopped now. I remember. And then, that's not neither. Remember when I was there. And then, so it started 2016, right? I bought my first Bitcoin 2016. How I went about the Bitcoin was during um, when there was this Ponzi scheme that was running in Nigeria back then, MMM. Uh, I didn't know it was a Ponzi scheme, right? So Ponzi scheme. Yeah, it's a Ponzi scheme. Did you make money? I made a lot of money <laughs> because we got too early. I made yeah. a lot of money yeah. from MMM, and then I bought my. I think I had over six Bitcoins, but I didn't understand back then. What BTC means. So I sold when Bitcoin rose went from twenty thousand to three thousand. Okay. I panicked and I sold up all my Bitcoin. And like I still remember the person I sold my last BTC to. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> when he was when I sold my last BTC to. Uh, but then um, after that, um, I've always wanted to go back. I won't even lie. So twenty twenty ending when I was trying to organize my finance and all of that, I'm like. Okay, I'm going to start investing back again into crypto and stocks and all of that. So 2020, I started slowly. I didn't make, it, I didn't, I didn't let people know about it because you know when it comes to money, I don't like involving people because of what happened during MMM that I helped a lot of people manage their money and when the thing crashed, people came dragging me down and all of that. So anything that has to do with investment, I just try to keep it to myself. But because I had this passion and flair to teach people about finance, yeah, because right. a lot of people actually do not know about oh, it. Finance. I'm like, okay, let me just go ahead and start making such content on my channel. Because even my channel didn't, wasn't about finance. It was more like cooking and yeah. traveling and all of that. But I enjoyed making finance videos because I've always loved money. So, yeah. So, what advice would you give anyone you know, trying to invest like myself? I'm trying to you know, get into the crypto game. Although I'm not paid like you know, so but small small. Don't worry, you will get there. That was small small money. You will get there. <laughs> so okay, the so the advice I would give to someone who wants to start when it comes to investing, I always let people know that see, investment will always be there, right? Before you start investing, I would tell you to keep a particular money aside that you fall back to. I call it emergency savings, right? Because these markets can be very volatile, crypto, stocks, even real estate, right? Always have a fallback or a backup plan. These things are, you can wake up one morning and maybe maybe the platform you're using to save or invest is gone. You, you get So first of all, I would advise you to have a backup plan, a backup 
Do I call it? Yeah, the emergency fund. When you have an emergency fund that can last even be three to six months in case anything happens, then go ahead to make researches. What are you, what's your risk management? What are you comfortable with using? Definitely, there's nothing like money you're not using. I mean, every single money is important, even yeah. one naira or one dollar, right? But then you have to learn what is risk management. What are you willing to lose? A lot of people do not have that mind to maybe lose like 50% of their portfolio or their savings. So are you willing to let go of at least 20%? If you're willing to let go of 20%, now, whatever investment you want to make, assess the risk. Is this something that is way, way volatile, like cryptocurrency? Or do you want something that is way safer? You can go with maybe index funds or ETFs, right? They are, they, are, they are low risk. So you can go with low risk investment or high risk. The thing is like the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So how fast do you want your reward to come? How, how uh, would I say, the risk? How, what's the way, this English is hard, but <laughs> how long or uh, how far are you willing to go when it comes to risk? Um, you know, as I said, high risk, high return. So if you want to go into cryptocurrency, always make sure to do your personal research. Crypto is very volatile. A portfolio can go from $100,000 to $10,000 in one day, I'm telling you. So that's my advice. A lot of things efficient. So yeah, exactly. A lot of people, especially the people who are new to cryptocurrency, if you are actually people that started this 2021, they are so impatient that they will put, maybe they will invest in a coin today and expect the coin to do 100x the next day. See cryptocurrency as a company, just see it as stocks that the company has to keep growing and it's the more the company grows, the more money, like the more value the, the token has, right? Yeah. So then we expect to, maybe because of all these meme coins that do 10,000% in one day, you think that that's actually how we, no, you have to be very patient. Most times these things are long term, even real estate, even, you know, stocks, they are all long term. So whatever investment you're making, always have, we have a poetry behind, sorry about it. So always have that mentality of long term, long term, long term. That's why I said analyze your risk and know how much you're willing to let go. And then do not always think of, oh, I have to make this money now. Think of long term. You would, you would, at least whenever the market crashes, you won't really be worried that, oh, I'm losing this amount of money. That's, that's, that's a great advice. You know? When the market is red, red. Yeah, no, when the, no, when the market is red, even me, I still, I still, no, when the market is red, I still get scared, I mean, right? Like, uh, exactly, I still get scared whenever the market just, is red, I won't lie, but at least if you manage your risk well and you have like a fallback plan, you always know that the market has been designed to always go up. Go and check it, like, stocks, real estate, crypto, the market is designed to go up. There's definitely going to be dips and dips and corrections, but at the end, if you look at it in years, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a like it's like a very it's not a straight or deep line. It's very um, exponential. But if you look at it day by day or or month by month, you will definitely see dips and all of that. So, so um, in case you guys don't know, she's a software engineer. Do you have any advice for us that want to you know get into software engineering and make money like? <laughs> and if I paid blood money. So the thing about getting, in, let me not even just um, say just software engineering, right? Tech in general, a lot of people actually think that getting into tech is all about coding. There are actually some tech jobs you can do that does not require coding at all, right? You can be a product manager, you can be a UI UX designer, you can be a UX researcher and all of that. So if you want to get into tech, I'll first of all say, what is it that you're passionate about? What is it you love doing? If it's the programming, you know, there are lots of, um, like say, areas when it comes to programming. We have the iOS, we have the Android, we have the web. I would just say go online and make proper research on all these things and see whatever, you know, like maybe a backend engineer is supposed to do. Is it something that interests you? And another thing about software engineering, it's just like, or tech in general, it's just like every other career. You have to put in the work and you have to also be patient. When you start newly, it's going to look very strange. It's going to sound like gibberish and all of that. But if you put in time, if you put in the work in two, three years time, you definitely see a big difference and you see jobs looking for you because when in tech, tech jobs are really high in demand. So yeah, it will definitely pay off whatever time you put into it. That's nice. That's nice. So yeah, you're, you're living in Europe now. So yeah. I have everywhere is connected. Like you can move from yeah, traveling to, to so. yeah, most especially the, yeah, is you that, can go by train. Is that where your passion for traveling was came about? Was, so the truth is, I think when it comes to the passion for travel, I think it's mostly what a lot of people in Nigeria would tell you, oh, I have passion for travel because 
where we are, especially on social media or movies we watch, you see people traveling and the place yeah. places they look really nice in your head. Oh, I want to travel to this place, oh, I want to travel to that place. And then when you eventually travel, you see how different it is from where we actually come from. So because I've gone to a lot of countries and I'm seeing something very different from what I've seen in the last 25 years of my life. So it's really something that I love. And I want to continue doing so. I would say it started maybe with even reading novels. Like when I used to read novels and it describes some certain cities or places, and then you create your own imagination. I'm like, oh, I want to travel to this place, or I want to travel to that place. How many countries have you been to? Um, Benin Republic, um, Germany, UA, UA, the United Arab Emirates, Croatia, Greece, France. So six countries. Yeah, how many? This country is in it. Okay, um, check before. I'm sorry. Um, Benin Republic was when we're doing our IT. Okay. That's like um, around five years ago. But then the remaining five countries, um, the space of a year and a half. Have you, have you been to any romantic Paris type of? Yeah. I've, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm not. No, I'm not done any romantic um, travel before. I haven't. Mm. But yeah, but I've been to Paris. But it was because it was work purpose. My company we have a branch in, in Paris. So when I visited Paris, it was solely because of work. And I will not lie, I didn't really enjoy Paris. Maybe because I came, you know, to work. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to visit there again, but it gave me Lagos vibes. People will kill me for this comment, but it gave me a lot of Lagos vibes that I don't really like Lagos. So when he gave me that vibe, I'm like, so oh, no, I want to come back. No romantic travels. Um, no romantic travels, but hope, so hoping hopefully. to come soon, yeah. And I'm asking because I want to know if you're saying we start with close. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> 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 I'm not searching, just know that I'm not okay, searching. Not searching okay. So, um, let's wrap it up. What, what are your goals for 2021? 2022. So, sorry. My goals for 2022. Yeah, your goals and your, you know. Okay, so my goals for 2022. I've already actually created a video on my finance channel, what I plan to achieve 2022. But the major highlight that I would want, the major things I would want to achieve in 2022 would be to own a house in Berlin. I want to own a house in Berlin. That's not you. Yeah, and then I want to um, get promoted at work. Like I want to advance. Yeah. yeah. Definitely in my career, I want to greatly advance. And then another thing too is I want to lose 20 kg this year. Is a serious goal. Are you I thought, I, I thought the thighs seemed like. <laughs> Yeah. I want to lose, no, it's for my health purpose. Okay, I'm actually okay, yeah. overweight. So, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, I want to lose at least 20 kg this year. Um, and then the rest, you can actually, I have, a, there, are, there, are, there are many. And I want to read, read over 30 books this year as well. But if you want to get the full, you know, plan, the way I plan to go, and then I want to make a million dollars. I forgot that also. Like, you got me, you got me so good. I was like, so good. <laughs> I want, to like a million, I want to make like a million dollars yeah. this year and yeah so those are like my major major goals yeah. but then if you want to watch everything how I broke it down what I want to achieve I broke them down in categories of family, career, business, um, relationship, lifestyle and health and then um, what again spirituality yeah I broke them down so if you want to see them I'll link the video here or make sure to also check out the main channel so this brings us to the end of the video my battery is about to die so thank you so much guys for you know watching and so, thank you. So you won't see me again, just tell her. And uh, he's going to go back. Next time she will be. <laughs> thank you so much for watching guys and we'll see you in our next one. Do not forget to subscribe and bye!